What I'm going to show you in this video is how to create this bivariate choropleth map in ArcGIS. So a quick tour. Texas is divided into four zones and you can see those by the different color values. So we have the red zone, yellow, green, and blue. And so that's the zone on the y-axis of the legend. On the x-axis we have the population. So the lower the population, the lighter the color, and the heavier the, po the population, the darker the color. So for instance in the red zone, zone 4, the lighter areas, which is most of the zone, has lower population, and the darker areas, say in West Texas and El Paso area, has a higher population, therefore a darker color. If we label the map, based off of these zones, you can see that, for instance, El Paso is zone 4, population 4, which means it has the highest population. And if you look elsewhere throughout the state, you see that the numbers correspond with the legend. So, let's build this from scratch. So I'm going to start with a blank county shapefile. And just to show you once again, if I color based off of the zone value you see that we have four zones in Texas and the other variable is going to be population <clears throat> so I need to bring up the attribute table and find my population attribute field I'm going to look at the statistics and see that the least populous county is 67 people and the most populous is 3,400,000 so I want to make sure I at least include that top number so I'm going to copy it for later reference if I need it Next, we need to go ahead and create uh, a class uh, field. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the ones I was using earlier. And I'm going to class my population into four classes. So I'm going to click Options, Add Field, and I'm going to call this uh, Pop Class. I'm going to keep it as an integer. And in this field, now I'm going to uh, classify them manually. So I'm going to click Options, Select by Attributes, and I will say population is greater than zero and population is less than or equal to and let's start with a town of 50,000 I will hit apply and you will see that it selects 221 out of the 295 so maybe that's a little much maybe let's go to a town of 20,000 and 140 that's a little more palatable so now I will right click on the population class header go to field calculator I will say yes that I want to do this outside of an edit session. I will say don't warn me again. And then I will say this will be population class 1. And make sure that calculate selected records only is checked. I will click OK and you will see everything that has been selected so that 0 to 20,000 people is now class 1. I will go back to my select by attributes and I will say OK now everything that is greater than 20,000 and less than or greater than uh, let's go 100,000. I will apply again field calculator and this will be class 2 go back to my attributes and say okay 100,000 and less than 500,000 apply field calculator class 3 and then finally I just want to do everything over 500,000 apply again field calculator and class 4 let me make sure that was 500,000 and it is so now I have my four classes set up so if we then categorize based off of the population class let's do a uh, oops excuse me here let's see if we can find a ramp there we go you can easily see the most populous counties in the state so now at this point it's very important that we clear our selection. You can see we still have the most populous county selected. So I'll select and clear selected features. I'm going to go back and I'm going to make everything the same color. <clears throat> and now what we need is uh, we need a field which will iterate every possible combination. So for instance, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 3, 1, 3, 4, 2, all those possible combinations. So I go back to the attribute table and I'm going to add yet another field. I'm going to just call this by var. This is my bivariate field. And instead of integer, I'm going to do text. I will hit OK. I'll come over and then do right click field calculator again. 
and I want this to be zone and population class. When I hit OK, you will see I now have one 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 one. Ah, there's some one twos, there's some one threes, and if I go ahead and sort this, you'll see I have one ones, one twos, one threes, two ones, two twos, two threes, two four, three one, three two, and so on and so forth, all the way down to four four. So now I have my bi bivariate field. So now let's go ahead and symbolize those. So to do that, go to the properties of the layer and click on categories. And for the value field, go down and select by var and hit add all values. And you'll see that now we have the one, 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 two, and so forth and so on. And we definitely want to uncheck all other values. Now, if you had some null values, it'd be uh, <clears throat> important that we keep that, but for now we do not. And if we look at the count, we can see that we do in fact have no uh, combinations that have zero uh, count. So with this, now we need to apply a color ramp. And we could look through and we can see that there's some pretty terrible possible color ramps. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create our own color ramp to look like this. <clears throat> so what we'll have is we'll have, for the ones, we will be orange but will increase in darkness and twos will have green increase in darkness threes will have blue and reds will have four so let's talk about how we create this color ramp here so what I like to do is I like to just start with an algorithmic color ramp <clears throat> so we'll choose the green to red for instance and if you right click on it you can go to the properties of this color ramp and you'll see that we have two algorithmic color ramps so it has green to yellow and then yellow to well, since we're going to have a 4x4, it'd be important for us to have four different colors. So I'm going to add two more algorithmic color ramps. And for the first algorithmic color ramp, I'll double click on it and we'll choose our starting color. I'm going to choose sort of a light yellow. And for the ending color, I'm going to choose, let's say, more of an orange. For the second color ramp, I'm going to start with a light green and end with a dark green. Then I'm going to make sure I choose two color, and for the start color I will do a light blue and end with a dark blue. And then for last I will do a two color red, start with a light red or pink, and start and end with a dark red. And you'll see now I have a four color algorithmic color ramp. I will hit OK. I will then choose all of my values. I will right click and say applies color scheme and it should have done that for you automatically and it did. Now it's important that if we want to use this color scheme again that we save it. So if we right click on the color ramp and go save to style you can name this style and I will call it uh, by variate or let's see here let's do a four variable hmm, that's that's even wrong so let's do four by four by variate color ramp hit OK. And now if I right click and uncheck graphic view you'll see that it saves as 4x4 by, by variate color ramp. I'm going to turn that back on. And now when I click OK you see that we have our bivariate map now. So let's go ahead and do a spot check and make sure that we do in fact uh, have the correct color ramp. So what I want to do is label those based off of our bivariate field. So I could choose bivariate, hit OK, right click and then label and you'll see that we have one, 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 two, one, three, and everything looks to be good. Okay, so now let's talk about the legend. I'm going to switch switch to layout view. I'm going to zoom in kind of closer so it's easier for you to see. And now what we're going to do is we're going to insert our legend. So insert legend. Counties is the only thing I have. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Take off the word legend. Next, 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 next. Finish. And now I have this nice tall legend. Now we could at this point manually create our four by four square, but that's you know, that's too much work. Let, let's have ArcMap do some of the heavy lifting. So right click on it, the legend that is, go to properties, click on items, click on the style, and all I really want are these boxes with no labels. So if you scroll down you'll see one that says legend and label, or vertical single symbol label only, but I still have this pesky label. So if we click on properties, and then click on the general tab we can uncheck show labels hit OK OK and then say we want four columns hit OK and now we have a nice square 
So at this point, I have um, my population going vertically and my zone going horizontally. But I actually want to reverse that. I want my population across the bottom and my zone going vertically. So what we can do is go back into the properties, click on legend, and for these points, since I'm going to turn it on end, I need to reverse the width and the height. So I'll do 15 for the width and 30 for the height. I will hit OK. And then I will right click, convert to graphics, right click again, do rotate or flip, and rotate left. And now I have my cube. So at this point, all I have to do is do insert text and add my labels. And so I do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, add, the zo uh, add zone, add population class, add my title, and I've created my bivariate map in ArcGIS.